doing the site consulting, are doing the actual community visit, uh, working through any incentive issues they might have, getting their workforce data. Um, they might need to want to know how many people they can get from a particular type of skill set, and they want to know from where it's drawing. They locate in a particular place. It's a 50 mile radius for people with that skill set. Uh, how much are they paying maybe in a particular industry? We have the resources that we think can bring value to Bullitt County in that way. And um, we will sell the client on that, those kinds of things and give them the information as they're here as a part of their visit. Just since we have been working, uh, just since I have been back at Geologic on 7, site consulted trips, we have worked with um, more than 25 lead generating companies. So what that means is we're, we're, we're constantly presenting to groups and all firms and banks and things that might potentially lead us or give us a lead. Um, we are having regular monthly communication with our site consultants now. We set up a little PR effort where we share information about our communities. Once a month, we have a flooded for almost 900 email addresses on that. More people from outside Kentucky to learn about our region. So I'm um, sure brought my heaters because I can't see that far. But uh, in the pipeline, we have about um, a lot more traffic on. You want to think about it so much. So uh, we have had 28 leads that we have shared with the region in the last year. Uh, that's new projects that have come in since, since September of last year, 2015. Uh, we have 40 projects in the pipeline. We have had eight site visits. And we have six locations. And the location is actually a win. Somebody who actually chose one of our communities to locate, representing over 450 jobs. That is uh, in addition to the work that our communities are doing. That is not all the work that we're doing. But that's, those are things that we have touched or participated in. One of the, uh, some of the other special projects that we have done that are outside the normal scope of that job development are in two areas in particular. One is in our regional air coalition. Uh, GLI set up a regional air coalition about 16 months ago where companies, uh, business leaders from across the region are meeting to talk about how to get more commercial air service into our airport. Um, I don't know how much you know about this, but air service is one of the top five reasons a company will choose a community. And Newell has a lot of great direct flights, but we're missing out on flights to important cities that serve some of our uh, local economies. So we're working to identify those cities. Uh, we did have a great announcement a couple of weeks ago. Um, actually, back in July, we saw it with one jet uh, doing direct flights to um, Raleigh, which started in October, and Pittsburgh, which started on that day. So they have direct flights in and out once a day to Pittsburgh and Raleigh to start in October. Next on the agenda for them is Kansas City, and New Orleans came up on our survey that that would be another top five. New Orleans and Jacksonville are two uh, other cities that companies want to get to pretty quickly. Now, one jet is a small airplane, and it holds um, seven passengers. Uh, it's priced a little bit higher, but that's OK, because the executives are willing to pay it. And uh, companies are willing to pay it to get their people back and forth in one day. And sometimes it overlooks it because they want to spend the night. So they're serving, uh, saving money on the airfare or on an overnight stay. So uh, but we have a lot more to do around this area because we are trying to get a commercial air service that is like a Delta or an American airline, specifically to the West Coast, uh, to the LA area, and to New York. We have a direct flight to New York. It's not, I don't have enough of those. We don't have a direct flight at all to LA. We have to stop in the middle part. And um, there's a lot to do around it. We've got to have a certain kind of planes. We've got to hold so many people. Our runway can definitely handle that sort of thing. But it takes a while to you know, figure all this out. And we're working through that now. And we're really proud of the work on the entire coalition. We're hoping that brings value to our counties. And the counties will be able to recruit companies more often or recruit, recruit companies more effectively so that um, through this air service being an identity for all of us. And then the logistics project that we just started. Uh, the logistics and mobile project, which Fort County we know is a great benefactor of UPS and how important UPS is to the Fort County economy. Uh, it's a very important uh, piece to the entire region. Uh, 
thousands of jobs beyond the UPS's plan affect, affect our economy. So um, we would like to have a, a work done around how do you become an excellent community? How do you become excellence in logistics? We have communities of excellence for logistics. And we're just starting that process and that conversation about what is our uh, highway system going to look like? Um, what is our workforce going to look like? Do we need some more training, a specific training center that would support logistics and supply chain related companies? With that, and then how that would result in more companies here. So um, that's a sort of a project that we're doing out of the box that's not just uh, pure economic development. Uh, another important point here, and I'm almost done, is talent attraction and workforce development. So uh, we have built some strategies around ways to actually uh, start marketing our community, our region, uh, for people to come here and live and work. We have 8,800 open positions that need 400 degrees or better. We have 31,000 open positions all together in our community. So it's a very serious issue. The one thing is it's not unique to where your mobile is across the country. That region is seeing this need for a stronger, better <coughs> workforce. There aren't, you know, our people are just not, uh, in our area, our people are aging out of the workforce and not enough are coming in during that working age. So we have just launched a strategic plan to try to start recruiting more people to come here to live in that working age population 18 to 54. And uh, we just launched a website last week for corporate recruiters to use as a tool. We'll be launching one at the end of October that will talk about what a great place it is to live. If you are a, a young millennial or someone in that age range, or just someone who's looking to relocate here, but this website will be a tool for you to find real estate, uh, schools, um, not in addition to the job itself, and it has a cost calculator on there where you can put in a $50,000 salary to see what that buys you over, um, you know, in. <coughs> Chicago versus Greater Rural, that you can have a home here, a car, a vacation. Uh, in Chicago, you wouldn't have any of that. You know, it talks about community patterns. So that would be a great website that we'll be launching in the end of October, and we'll share that with the judge and John and, um, and be able to ask you to share that with folks. Maybe you're trying to recruit back to our area. Uh, maybe you have old friends and kids that you're ready for them to come back. Uh, this could be a tool that helps you do that. It's got some templates even in there that you can use for the PR statement if you don't know what to say or write. You can still send the language from that template. So um, that's really important what we're doing around that. Workforce certifications are really important that we're working forward in the next generation learning uh, program. We are working very closely with your opportunity knocks. That's probably one of our uh, biggest partners right now is how to place some of these veterans in jobs because they're transitioning out of their military career and they're not quite ready to retire. And they have a lot to offer, not just from a skill set, but from talent uh, set and experience that, that employers really need. So we want to make sure we're, pla we're placing those folks in jobs that appear in our communities so that they don't have to relocate somewhere else. And that is it. I try to go super fast. I don't take a lot of your time. I'm always happy to answer questions with you one on one. You can always email me the judge and I get all of you. If we have a minute or two, I'm happy to answer some questions now. But it's my pleasure and honor to be here and have this opportunity. I've met the judge so many times. We have some great talks. So it's great for the case.
Now therefore, Judge Melanie J. Roberts, Judge Executive of Bullock County Commonwealth of Kentucky, does hereby call upon all citizens of Bullock County to recognize the importance of early screening and detection of prostate cancer and proclaims the month of September 2016 as Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. When Debbie emailed us or contacted my office, she, in fact, she sent a letter. She said, would you please do this? And of course, we don't mind doing this at all. This is what we're here for, is to get the um, news out. But how did you have to make that? As well as he can do. Well, we really appreciate y'all coming out. Amy, do you want to say anything? She said it all. To show your advocacy for making folks aware. So let me present that to you. And um, let's give uh, Annie and Debbie a round of support.
Let's go on down to new business number one, first reading of public hearing for zoning ordinance 2016Z-23. Is Luke here tonight? Good evening, Mr. Director Hawkins. Mr. Director. Good evening. <laughs> okay, uh, docket 2016Z-23. African Luke Wilson is asking to rezone 1125 acres more or less from agriculture to our own residential. This is located at lots uh, 4243, 44, 116, 115, and 114 uh, country estates, section 2, that's off of Riverview Drive. Uh, the Planning Commission heard this case on August 11th and sends a favorable recommendation to physical court of the request. Zoning changes in agreement with the doctor's comprehensive plan. Thank you, Director Hawkins. Hawkins, Mr. Clary. Zoning warrant number 16-20, series 2016. An ordinance changes the zoning from agricultural to Green Valley Reserve to R1 residential. The property in question is 11.5 acres, more or less, located at lots 42, 43, 44, 116, 115, 114 in the country state, section 2, off of Riverview Drive, and in an unincorporated area of the county. Grant the Fiscal Court of Bullock County to the evidence of public hearing of the Planning Commission and the recommendation of the Commission. We ask the Fiscal Court concurs in and also reach the Planning Commission for said zoning change and approves and accepts the recommendations of the Planning Commission in this matter of South said minutes. Now, therefore, we are named by the Fiscal Court of Bullock County, Kentucky. Session 1, that the above property located in the unincorporated area of Bullock County and will be prescribed in the Minister of Records of the Planning Commission in Document 2016Z-23. It's hereby changed from agricultural to Green Valley Reserve to R1 residential. Section 2, this order should take effect on passing publication. We have a first reading and a regular meeting of the District Court of Bullock County, Kentucky, on the 6th day of September 2016. We begin the second reading and vote upon the regular meeting of the Bullock County District Court on the 20th day of September 2016. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in favor of this zoning request? Mr. Clary? Mr. Clary? Mr. So, 
I've got a height on it. You know, we got a contractor that come out of Indiana last Friday. And just, just to see what kind of money it was going to be, if it could be done. And he hadn't got a quote by the week yet. And I said that the state garage over on Old 61 or whatever that John Hamilton or whatever it is, has an engineering plans that from that point to the river. So I think what what height what we need to do, this is just my opinion, is, is to see what kind of price and if it's feasible for you to do it. They're going to price a three foot and a four foot cold to drill across there to see, you know, how it works, what, what can be done, and then to see if we can get the engineer plans from the state. If not, we absolutely have to have an engineer to shoot it to make sure the drainage gets from point A to the river. Yeah, we told you that Friday, I mean, it's, it's got a ditch all the way to the river. Uh, we walked it, you know, it's got, but it's again, it's a another 15 inch tile all the way through, so it might be something we have to go over an old 61 with another tile in here, you know, to carefully push out. Uh, but you, I mean, you get it rain an inch, and it's four foot deep over the two days. I mean, that's just, and it's just backing up underneath the jail. It's, it's causing a lot of problems. And it's going to eventually get very bad. I mean, it's been doing this for several years. So, uh, so that's kind of what I mean, that's what we have on that. I mean, I would suggest this, my suggestion is to be ready to see what the gentleman, they came out to see if it was feasible to do how much it was. So we'll have an apples to apples. And if we get that, we can get, get the bid job and just see if the state will let us have their engineering plans. If not, we'll have to hire an engineer to cite that to the road. But then again, we'll have to probably get to the city because it's all in the city to do it. So. I was just
Yes. Yes. Yeah. 